Hello, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Mariano Velar. I'm part of, of the Cloud Builder team at Mercado Libre. So today uh, uh, I'm going to start uh, giving a, a brief introduction about uh, the company and about how we were doing things uh, before OpenStack. Then Leandro uh, will sh show you our more in, in detail our OpenStack implementation. So, well, for those that don't know about Mercado Libre, it, it is the leader e-commerce. E it's the leader e-commerce e platform in Latin America. It has presence in 16 countries. It's the, it's the eighth online retailer uh, worldwide. It has more than 1,600 employees. 300 of them are IT related. We have more than 62 million registered users. Uh, about uh, num uh, we have 20 million API requests per minute, 50K requests uh, per second on our peak season, and around four gigabit uh, of internet bandwidth per, per second. So uh, we have around 1,000 physical servers and 7,000 virtual instances running in our environment. So, um, in 2008, we, we started thinking on virtualizing all our, infrastructure, all our infrastructure, and we thought that that would be enough and will be able to to supply all, all the needs that that our development team had. But as you will see, that didn't happen. So first of all, uh, we started just virtualizing uh, our, our, our instances, but it was not uh, an automatic process. <laughs> Everything was manual, but we were able to, to supply all the demand. Then as the business grew, uh, grew and, uh, and our business changed because we, we moved from a boxed uh, software uh, to, to, an open, to an open solution with APIs and the demand of hardware was increasing a lot and we were not able to, to provision uh, enough, enough infrastructure for our developers. So, uh, it was, uh, there were some impacts on, on the business because of that. Uh, we, did, we didn't have scriptable configurations on the VMs. Uh, uh, the operation team was, uh, uh, was provisioning the, the servers, not, not, the, not the final user. We were cloning the, the VMs, so we didn't have like a, a, we didn't have a, an image provision to provision. The, we were using a lot of storage. It was not easy to, to manage. Uh, we we were locked by by an OS vendor. The, the deploys were not easy, and we were very slow. We were, so so we started thinking on on another solution for that. <laughs> we were not able to satisfy the demand. The projects were delayed. Uh, so the, the technology was, was obsolete. We, we, we needed to, to find a, another solution. The, the cost on the, on the data center were growing, and the company was, was growing, but not uh, as expected because of all these issues. So uh, we were targeted as a bottleneck. So well, uh, we thinking we we started thinking on on, on redesign our, our infrastructure to become a real infrastructure as a service. So uh, 
Leandro will will talk to you about about that. Okay. <clears throat> Hi guys, my name is Leandro. Um, I'm a senior engineer at Mercado Libre. I'm the one of the guys who deploy the OpenStack infrastructure in our company. So I want to talk to you about a little bit of how our infrastructure is composed and how we're redesigned to become a real infrastructure as a service provider. Why we choose OpenStack? We chose OpenStack because we love open source. Everything in Mercado Libre is open source. Uh, our laptops run Linux. Um, there's, no, we, uh, there's just one window box that the sub users use. <laughs> we, of course, uh, we wanted to reduce cost because uh, our infrastructure were real expensive. We were using Oracle VM to virtualize, and it was costing us a lot. All the licensing stuff, all the stuff was costing a lot. Uh, because it has no vendor lock-in, we can deploy on everywhere. Because it's really a full cloud OS by now. It's written in Python, we love Python, so we love to hack it a lot. And it's developer under the boom to do so. Okay, all of, all of our infrastructure uh, that run on top of OpenStack, uh, it ran on Ubuntu, yeah. Uh, the Cactus version of our cloud was running on Ubuntu 10.10 Maverick, and we are actually running SX on top of Ubuntu 10.04. Uh, we love Ubuntu because it's free, it's open source, it's based on Debian, I personally love Debian. In uh, terms of cost, of course, uh, because it has LTAs for updates and upgrades, it's flexible, it's stable, it's fast. It's easy to deploy, it's easy to tune. No, no. It's proven to shine as well as a host and guest. We are using KVM as an hypervisor. So it's working pretty well on OpenStack, as you know. Um, recently, we have professional support from Canonical. Yeah. Okay, uh, I want to talk about a little bit of how the architecture is composed. Uh, I think you many guys are curious about how everything is, is set up. Um, that's our first version of the cloud uh, that was running actually on Cactus. We are using OpenStack since Vexor release. Um, the first production environment was in Cactus about a year plus, almost two years ago. Um, it was composed by uh, several clusters, so several regions uh, distributed across two data centers. We have two data centers located in Virginia. Um, the several clusters were spread across all those data centers. Uh, of course, uh, we need a way to integrate all that mix environment. So we have to deploy our custom API that's called Massive Deployer, that one you're seeing there. Uh, we, in that way, we see the whole, the whole infrastructure, the whole clusters, or the whole region of OpenStack as a one-only resource. It's so, it's so unaware. Um, Back in Cactus, the zone code wasn't working pretty well, but it was removed uh, before. Um, in SX, uh, actually, sales is, 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 no, is not active yet. So actually, we deploy, uh, we, we create an API that shows the whole clusters on the whole region as a one region. And from that API, we manage uh, all the instance creation, and we know there that where is the cluster with more resources or something where we can create a, uh, a VM back there. Uh, the whole intelligence of the creation of what, what, which cluster has the CPU, so which flavor should run on which one, it's all, it's located on the Massive Player API, it's kind of a schedule. Um, as I told you, uh, we have many clusters distributed across regions. Uh, we have uh, about, um, um, by now, we have about 40 or 50 clusters and we're running about 16 nodes per cluster. Um, we have a pool of Glance image services uh, because it's heavily used. And back there, or back then, sorry, uh, we were using Nova volumes um, as a block storage to attach to the VMs. Uh, we were using LBM formatted file system that was running on the controller. Um, that was, a, well, that was a huge problem because uh, every cluster in every region that was uh, located across whole data centers 
has their own Nova volume endpoint. Uh, so that was pretty bad because uh, if, it wa if it had a connectivity issue or, for, or something, uh, the LVM gets corrupted and we lost all that block storage until we reco recover it. Um, we needed to, we, needed, we, know, we knew that we have to work on, on that because that, that was a part of the cloud that we are not uh, happy to. Um, actually, the, actually the LVM, the LVM file system, uh, was on top of a loan that was in a NetApp storage system. So it's kind of, it's a loan uh, that we show on the NetApp and then we export via, via, the, via the controller, uh, no volume service to the, to the VMs. It's kind of, was kind of tricky. Um, so we know we'll have to work on that. Um, separately, we have a Swift cluster, uh, about 40 nodes, Swift cluster about a, um, 70 terabytes usable storage of Swift. Uh, on Swift, we store CSS files, GS files, um, template files, the whole thing when, that you see when you enter the site, all the style sheets, all uh, the device ID, the security is actually stored on Swift. So when you log into Mercado Libre, all the thing you see is actually, is actually getting, getting from Swift. Uh, of, of course, we have CDN, uh, we have caching, I would tell you. I'm going to talk about um, after. But in that time, uh, back then, we have a MySQL cluster with DRBD. Uh, wasn't scaling. Uh, we knew that we have to change that part of the infrastructure too. And if you ask how we can manage uh, 7,000 uh, 7, VMs or 100 plus physical nodes, we are using Chef for it. Uh, the whole physical infrastructure and the whole virtual machines configuration is, man is managed by Chef. So that's how we do it. I'm going to explain a little bit more in deeper in a couple of slides. But, uh, I'm going, to, check, I'm going to, to show you how a cluster itself was composed back there. Um, we're uh, about uh, 15 nodes uh, compute node cluster with a controller that has an uh, API. Uh, endpoint as a Nova network, as a Nova scheduler, and as a Nova volume server. Um, 16 node, a two spurs node. One of the spur node was configured as a controller back then when in Cactus there's no HA for OpenStack, so uh, we actually managed to have another spur controller that can uh, turn it on in case of this controller was lost and recovered. So that was how it composed. Um, the SKC traffic that actually go to the NetApp storage. The massive deploy API, as I told you before, it was our API to show the whole infrastructure as one, as on an awareness. Um, all the, I don't know if Mariano told uh, said, but Mercado Libre is the whole site uh, for the 16 countries is actually running on top of the open stack. Um, we have OpenStack on production. The whole site is on it. Um, we, have, we have about 7,000 VMs running for uh, about 80% 80, 80 is for the productive production traffic, about 20% is for testing and internal use. But all our infrastructure, testing, production, everything is running on top of OpenStack. Now we are running on top of Essex and back there we are in Cactus. So that's one, uh, that's what one of our cluster was composed back there. So, yeah. Yeah, we have many problems with that. So uh, we knew we have to, we have to manage to reconfigure or uh, to, to re-architecture the whole cloud to solve a lot of problems that we were having. So uh, how we managed to do that? Uh, one, first, we moved from Cactus to Essex. We, we didn't touch the app law. Um, many of you guys maybe are asking how, you, uh, how we upgraded the whole cloud from uh, Cactus to Essex. Um, yeah, we don't. In our API, we just started to install an Essex class or an Essex production environment and in our API, we just redirected the, cre the creation calls 
to the new whole cloud. And our infrastructure is, uh, all of our infrastructure is uh, stateless. Uh, so all our APIs, all our databases, if we spin up, we can run it on anywhere, or on Amazon, on Rackspace, on our internal cloud. Um, that's one of the big changes we made when we moved from vir flat virtualization to a cloud infrastructure. Uh, we have to tell all our devs uh, how we are going to work in a cloud environment, and that all the APIs that we are going to code should be stateless. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's really advantage, and that's why we manage to move so easily between Cactus and Essex without any problem. So, for example, if you're running a, I don't know, a 50, 50 node uh, front end web servers uh, on Cactus, uh, we sh the developer just make an API call to create all the 15 nodes uh, on, the new, on the new cloud, on the new version of the cloud, and then via monitoring, uh, we know when a compute node uh, wasn't running any, any VMs anymore, so we have managed to be a chef, um, pick up that resource or pick up that compute node and add it to the new cloud. So we do that, that automatically. So we are already not wasting our resources uh, on zombie machines or kind of that. Um, of course, uh, when we deploy Essex, many new things come, like Keystone, for example, that was a big change because when we were using Cactus, um, we have our, all our departments of our slash tenants uh, created on each cluster, which they part of keys. So uh, actually the API uh, managed to pick up the keys uh, for, for the cluster that the VM is going to run and running on that. We keyed on that gets very simplified because you just have an identity, an identity service, an identity API, so uh, you need just to have a grab a token and it's been up and then the massive deployer knows where to put the, all the VMs, so um, based on the worst, more free resources, DCPU, memory, or that, or which flavor have run. Um, of course, we have to integrate Swift uh, with Keystone. That was, uh, was pretty easy. Um, the Glance image service just moved from, from versions. Uh, we have to, of course, uh, upload the images that we had on the, on the Cactus, on the Cactus um, version of the cloud to the new Glance image service. But actually, we don't have many, many AMIs. Uh, that's the Amazon term. I don't know how to do it. Um, we have about um, one Ubuntu on 204 image. Uh, we have a Red Hat image and a Windows image, just in case. Um, but um, the developers just spin up uh, a, 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 an image that doesn't have anything on it. So um, the Ubuntu and the Red Hat, and based on the metadata that it's passed via user data into the instance, the whole instance get configured by itself using that Key value, uh, key value values you know, um, to configure the stuff using Chef. Uh, every instance that spin up, just know uh, who it is and where it have to go and, and where it have to put in on a load balancer. Uh, so just the instance just spin up and get itself configured via Chef. So that's the work for uh, Red Hat and Ubuntu and everything. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, what an instance life is in Mercado Libre. Um, as I told you before, the database was a, was a big problem. VRBD was skinny enough. Um, we have a lot of write errors, a lot of sync errors. So we moved from DRB, MySQL with VRBD um, we, uh, to MySQL, MySQL Galera cluster. I don't know if you, any guys of you here know Galera. Uh, it's a really great product. Uh, it's open source and made by CodeShip. Um, actually, Galera runs WS Rep protocol, so to sync uh, every info between the nodes. It's really great because it has um, 
um, master master configuration, so we can have actually we have about 20 Galera nodes, 20 Galera MySQL nodes that receive all the cloud traffic. Um, so all the all the databases of the whole, of each region are stored on Galera. Uh, it's really cool. Um, okay, uh, we're still using Chef, uh, the new version of Chef, uh, with databases stored in Galera too. Um, uh, well, okay, of course, um, we we're still using Swift um, as an option storage, as I told you before, to store all the uh, all the CSS and the site style sheet. Um, we are planning to move all the items, uh, all the items images that when you, I don't know if you guys know Mercado Libre, but it's kind of it's kind of eBay. Uh, so we are going to store the whole the whole site images in Swift. Uh, that's a big a big project that's going on. Um, okay. So, okay, uh, if you see here, um, now uh, the controller is only acting as a network, an API, and a scheduler. It's not acting as a, as a Nova volume server or distributor anymore. Um, what we've done here, um, we have a lot of, I don't know, a couple of trillion of dollars on NetApp storage. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, 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 have to, we have to use it, so, um, we knew that uh, NetApp was really involved uh, on OpenStack when we were trying Essex. So actually we asked NetApp if they were calling a, a Nova volume driver and Rob Esker told us that they're working on it so we started to try that Nova volume driver and actually our Essex cloud is using it so now uh, the whole volumes, the whole block storage is directly storage, stored on on the whole NetApp farm. So all the ISCASI mapping is not done via the controller to the VM to the LAN anymore. So now it's done directly uh, to, the, to the data fabric manager that it's uh, the server that uh, has all the, uh, all the storage pulse configured. So each cluster has its own storage service to store all the, all the loons to, to all the projects. Uh, so we solved that problem and we solved that database issue too. Uh, we're still having about a, uh, by now we're having actually um, about f uh, 24 or 25 nodes per cluster. Um, so I, I have to, I have to do this slide, so. Okay. Um, what is running, um, what is running inside a, a VM or a computer, or OpenStack or a computer? No. Um, the whole, uh, as I told you before, the, Whole Mercado Libre infrastructure runs on OpenStack. Whole infrastructure. The second distribution, la distribution layer that runs on Nginx, it's all virtualized, it's running on Ubuntu, and it's running on top of OpenStack. All our load balancers that distribute all the traffic to the APIs are on top of OpenStack. And it can tell you a lot of traffic. Um, the caching layer too. The caching layer, we use Varnish from caching uh, it's running on top of OpenStack 2 on virtual machines. Uh, we have to work a lot of, uh, with, a, with a working driver uh, to get that work pretty well because um, we have to use the Virtio driver and um, tune up a little bit because it wasn't, it wasn't scaling up enough. Um, and the server layer, of course, where all the applications run, mainly are Apache Tomcat, but uh, we have a lot of APIs running on Node.js and Python. Uh, the whole server layer is running to on, uh, on, op on top of OpenStack. All the backends uh, with no SQL databases or SQL databases like Redis, Mongo, etc., uh, are running on top of OpenStack too. So RabbitMQ too. Uh, so we have the front end, the distribution layer, the caching layer, all is running virtualized on top of OpenStack. Okay, um, oh, sorry, go back, on, go back a little bit. One more. Okay. Okay, I'll turn. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, fire the slide, man. Um, okay, I forgot to mention something important. We're actually uh, running Quantum 2. Uh, we have multi-tenant, so every, every department on Mercado Libre is a tenant or a tenant for OpenStack. 
uh, every pool of machine that the developer has is ha has their own identity and belongs to his chain and only he can manage that. Um, we are running Quantum uh, to isolate everything. Uh, we are using VLAN mode now, um, VLAN mode in Quantum, yeah? Um, and actually we managed to develop our custom API to talk to our Johnny per switches uh, because we didn't have BX Cisco switches so uh, we, have to, we have to develop ourselves a custom API to talk to them uh, so we can, when we create or spin up a VM that belongs to a VLAN, uh, actually Quantum talk to our plugin and then create it on, on the Johnny per switches. So um, a little conclusions. Um, I think that many guys here uh, think that OpenStack is not ready for production, maybe uh, because of the experience, the installation experience uh, is generally is pretty bad. Uh, but when we used to, um, I don't know, you have, if, you, if you want to install OpenStack and running on production, uh, if you don't have um, a DevOps team that actually loves Python and loves to hack uh, old code, um, maybe, maybe it's going to get pretty tricky for you, but, uh, uh, but we managed to love OpenStack and all the features that we use are mainly most of the, of the OpenStack core projects uh, are pretty stable for us. Uh, of course, when we were styling, it was, um, okay, stack trace, stack trace, stack trace, stack trace. Okay, but we have to hack it a little bit, but when, when, once you get uh, once you get that all that stable, is it worked pretty well. So, okay, um, it's it's um, it's really important to 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 notice this. Um, we managed to go from a flat virtualization uh, era to move to a cloud infrastructure or infrastructure as a service. Um, was really hard to to educate our developers to move from that type of virtualization to move to the cloud. Uh, I think that was a really hardest part of it. Um, but now we can, we can manage to equal the supply. So actually, we move from a developer, so oh, okay, uh, I'm a developer, I need a machine, I uh, wrote an email to the, the ops team, and the ops teams just created a VM and clone it for another similar VM, was a pretty fucked up, so. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we have a little bit of scripting uh, involved on the process to configure and craft all the VMs. Uh, then we pass to the architecture team to configure all the applications, and all of that, oh, the whole process was, oh, man. Um, then the, the, the storage team created the NFS volume, all the block storage volume, and attach it to a VM. Uh, we have to mo uh, send a monitoring request to the NOC to get monitored and send traffic after adding to the load balancer manually. So we move we move from that to the developers just curl the API, create a, a create a server exactly the same like like others that they have. Um, create create a, a her vo his volumes and attach it to a server manually script that they, they do whatever they want. Uh, with another API call, they can set the VM to production state. Uh, when they say the VM to production state, uh, it's get monitored automatically. Uh, we are using Senos for, for monitoring. We are using the Senos API uh, to do that. Uh, and then when, when it's ready, they just made a pull request on Nginx and the machine Start to start, start to receive traffic. Actually, uh, it can be in manual or it can be automatic. If the developer configure his pull as um, nginx automatic pull, when they set the VM to production state, actually automatically gets pulled to the nginx balancer. Okay. Um, these are a little bit of conclusion. So um, we managed to uh, get all the infrastructure present as a whole. Uh, we wanted to do that. We wanted to grow faster. Uh, actually, the developers was pretty cranky about uh, 
I asked her for IBM uh, two days ago, oh, what's going on? Um, so we knew, we knew that we need to move from a from flat virtualization mode to a cloud mode, and with all the advantage that they have. Uh, we run on commodity hardware. We are using Supermicro and Dell, and Dell hardware. Uh, we have Canonical support. Well, a lot of we are having we are having a lot of issues uh, with KVM on 12.4 uh, from the, on the last kernel, and having Canonical support to back fix that was was really great. Um, the scalability and performance, of course, um, we have auto scaling uh, developed to a feature of auto scaling that. If, if a pool is fully loaded, they just automatically spin up more VMs. Um, flexibility, and we are six times faster. Uh, mil VMs in the virtualization era. Uh, totally just the numbers. Um, we have six, about 7,000, this is our data. Um, yeah, in back then, uh, we, spend about uh, two hours or four hours maybe to get the VM fully configured. And now uh, the developers just run a, run a call, run a call. Um, the VM gets productive uh, to production state to receive traffic in about eight seconds. Um, we are using NFS share storage to store, the, to store the underscore base directory where the glance images are stored. So with that and the copy and write feature of KVM, we managed to spin up really faster at the end. So uh, that's really cool. In eight seconds, you have a, produ a productive uh, front-end web server, for example, running Apache. Um, we, can, we managed to, to build a lot of features on top of OpenStack during the flexibility and the extensibility. Uh, we have actually load, balance, load balancing as a service that actually use our custom API, own one custom API that we craft. Um, load balancing as a service is using HA proxy and Nginx, uh, depend on what balancing method you need or you need caching or not. Um, we develop database as a service on top of it using MySQL. Uh, we build an API that developers just need a database and just made a call. Uh, Q as a service, that's actually we're just using RabbitMQ. Um, cache as a service that uses memcache, uh, supports memcache binary and text protocol. Uh, that's really cool because uh, in, the, in, pa in the past, uh, if a developer actually needs, for example, to create, uh, to create a feed or to create a feed SAPI, uh, it has to install the whole setup or install, I don't know, in, uh, all the queue and all the thing. Now it just can and create a topic or something in, in, our, in our queue as a service system, so that's it's been a pretty fast. Okay. Um, okay, this is our context, if you want to connect us. Um, I don't know if you got any guys had a question for us. We are using, actually we're using a five big IP uh, for the edge traffic, okay. uh, and then we are using Nginx as a second layer. Are you taking advantage of SnapMirror in the NetApp environment to do replication between your environments? No, no, uh, actually uh, each data center is, is, is pretty independent each other, between each other. Uh, our share ser there are shared services between them, but we don't replicate them uh, between storages. So. Uh, I think it's issue. Uh, um, actually, the massive deployer has um, many many custom internal uh, Mercado Libre things like metadata, pool configuration. Wait, okay. Uh, in Mercado Libre. Uh, a group of VMs, it's a VM pool, and we manage, um, I don't know how to say it, um, each VM pool has 
particularities, particularities of uh, Merc internal Mercalli result. I don't, I don't know if it really worth to to get an open source, but um, the load balancing as a service, the queue as a service, me, the me, uh, cache as a service, and database as a service uh, features, uh, we're going to release it yes, open source. But actually, if you're going to, uh, if you need. Uh, to, to see all the, um, all the infrastructure as a whole. Maybe uh, when cells get gets into Grizzly, I don't know if you're, if you're going to get into Grizzly, uh, that maybe will be a better, a better option for you. Do you, do you think, uh, are, you, yeah, okay. yeah. are you taking advantage of the security groups uh, features and all the IP tables uh, front yeah. end? Yeah, uh, we are. That's, yeah. sorry, that's one question. And the other one is, uh, what do you think about, uh, well, I noticed that you have 10 servers, or 20 servers, sorry, about with Galera cluster to uh, to deploy all your high availability feature in, in terms of your MySQL deployment. Uh, but what would you think uh, uh, to try to, tr to create something uh, like an OSQL um, solution to, you know, to store all the, the open stack data in, in, in Taking advantage of the scalability instead of uh, oh. persistence or service. Oh. You, uh, using security groups? Uh, no, no, no. That's that's the first question, and the other one is instead of uh, 20 nodes with MySQL Galera cluster, uh, try to think in in open stack, uh, storing all the, the data in a NoSQL model. But it's uh, what is your opinion in, in terms of that? Uh, that does not exist, I know. But but uh, wait. what do you what do you think? We are we are using actually we're using uh, a lot of Mongo a lot of MongoDB and Redis. Uh, we actually manage uh, via via Chef and I don't know if you guys saw uh, Matt presentation before, but we have a, a lot of uh, NoSQL clusters running in OpenStack and it performs pretty well. Um, I know what your question was about it. Of the uh, of the Galera cluster, I mean that uh, why not to deploy into a, ah, a no okay. SQL model? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we we go we got with Galera with, because um, we don't just store uh, open stack info there. We store a lot of things. Uh, uh, all our API databases and we are stored in Galera. Uh, we need a multi-master environment that performs really well. So that was we go with that solution. Uh, you only have about uh, 25 um, con compute nodes in each cluster. Is there a reason why you stopped at 25? Uh, actually, that size uh, uh, came from the early version of the cloud because we were using flat networking, and we, we managed to size that, n that number of compute nodes running, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 VM or uh, 15 VMs. Uh, was enough to fool a whole slash 24 EP address space. So that comes from, uh, I don't know, the early version of the cloud. But actually, we are planning to move from that scheme uh, to a big cluster for each data center. But we are working with that. Um, we are trying with Quantum and Melange. Actually, the Quantum and Melange integration is pretty crappy. So uh, we, are, we are developing on top of that. We are hacking out a little bit to actually go to a two big fat ass clusters to and, and the that center. And the question is, uh, when your controller node dies, how do you bring up uh, a replacement controller in each, in each cluster? Um, if a controller node dies, uh, since uh, the whole uh, block storage traffic is actually goes to directly to NetApp, um, we uh, actually we don't have downtime. So the only thing that we, you can do is it's spin up a new VM of that cluster. So, um, or when an image boot, maybe you, the ima that, that VM doesn't get made a data, but <clears throat> that's why we have a spare controller now. And uh, we have configure. Uh, so when, if a controller dies, we just turn the, the other on. Is that manual or do you have automation there to bring the spare controller? Uh, we, have, we, we do that with Chef. If, if a controller dies, chef notice via monitoring and then. Uh, 
uh, the, the networking the networking driver. Uh, we are using E E one one hundred one thousand sorry the E one thousand driver um, uh, wasn't wasn't I don't know how to say it was it taking up the whole with the whole traffic was dropping packages and was uh, actually performing pretty slacky so uh, we moved to a beard, to Birtayo driver and we have to tune Birtayo a little bit but now it's taking the whole traffic bar and it's caching uh, nginx traffic. It's all go through there. When, uh, yeah, yeah, when a new VM spin up, uh, if the pool has automated commit uh, activated, it actually add themselves uh, itself as a as a back as a backend node on nginx and then reloads the configuration. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we have an agent that actually is monitoring constantly if there are changes to the to the to the backends, and when it takes one, it's reload. Yeah. Glance. Um, actually, we are using Glance uh, just one time uh, to to spin up the first VM because as I told you before, uh, we are using an NFS share volume to store the underscore base directory where the, the image itself is stored. So Glance is used just one time uh, when the first VM is spin up with that image. And then when you launch uh, the same image on another cluster or everything, first they check with a simple API call uh, to Glance if it ex exists on the underscore base. And actually it does. And then spin up the VM really faster and you don't need to get a from glance every time that you create a machine. Yeah. Um, so with, with this effort, would you say that um, having the developers, I'm guessing that with the VM approach, virtualization approach development, the images and the images are more alive all the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, would you say that that was probably the biggest mind change? Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, the developers. Uh, that's one of the reasons that we well, that we choose Chef. Uh, many many applications in Mercado Libre are built in Ruby, so uh, our developers are pretty experienced on it. Um, writing ch Chef recipes for them was was pretty easy because it's just declarative. Uh, so we assist them if they need, but they write it themselves. Um, wasn't a big effort because um, we we were creating the whole cloud stuff uh, in an, in a new environment where the where the old stuff was was still working. So many developers were dedicated actually to uh, translate all the installation stuff through Chef recipes, and then 